If there was one phrase that characterized the everyman perception of anime, it would probably be, what the fuck? All of us know some people who have at least heard of some anime titles and may have watched a few episodes of a series, and for some reason cannot shut up about how much of a mindfuck they think it is. I find that most everyone who talks about anime in this kind of light focuses too hard on their own cultural hang-ups and don't allow the show to tell its story. It's like showing them something that even slightly goes against their sensibilities immediately closes their mind. It's a different country for crying out loud. Why in the hell would you expect something from Japan to fit squarely within your own cultural mindset? If we can get outside of ourselves, we can realize just how alien and weird our own culture can be to others. For instance, a large majority of the Asian population do not consume dairy. It's just not part of their diet. And if they know how cheese was made, they probably would never touch the stuff. Hell, you probably wouldn't touch the stuff if you knew that cheese was basically spoiled milk laced with stomach enzymes. But since we grew up with the stuff, we never even think about it, and we wouldn't understand why anyone would have a problem with it. Now, that isn't to say that all anime is normal to the Japanese. Right. There's a difference between cultural idiosyncrasies and just plain insanity. Guess which side of the spectrum Apocalypse Zero falls under? Apocalypse Zero has been waiting on the review shelf for quite some time, but I never could find a way to approach it that didn't just have me point to the screen and say, Can you believe this shit? The whole show is just one hellish spectacle after another, and there's only so much I can show anyways because of the disturbing amount of nudity in it. Key word here being disturbing. Still, I can't put this off forever, and the longer I wait, the higher the expectation. The longer I wait, the longer I wait, the longer I wait. So the best thing I could do is bite the bullet and share the shit-chucking insanity. Hold on to your loved ones, remember to breathe, and try not to swallow your own tongue. This is Apocalypse Zero. The series begins with one of the most weirdly concise bits of exposition I can remember hearing. At the beginning of the 21st century, the crust of the Earth was ruptured with cataclysmic seismic activity. For three long years, untold millions of people died, and peace and order on Earth were virtually eradicated. The only way this could have been quicker is if the narrator just said, in the 21st century, Fist of the North Mad Max Judge Dredd happened. We open with a fight in the snow between a dude in a speedo with iron balls stuck to his chest and a gigantic bear thing with rock tits. Well, that didn't take long, did it? The radioactive mutant bear's blood contains a strong acid. If you use only brute force to defeat the bear, then your flesh will be melted by the blood that you happen to shed. And if you wish to keep on living, then you must draw in air with your lungs. For the air with which you draw in with your lungs is the only thing that can keep you living. How many more of these do I have again? So, Kakugo, you must fight creatively. So, how does he fight creatively? By punching it some more. My appearance is of little consequence in the end. My duty is to win at any cost. My scarred flesh will be the proof of my victory. My scarred flesh will be proof of my victory. God, just saying that will give your tongue chest hair. I mean, as silly as that really sounds, because let's face it, if that were true, then Marilyn Manson would have been Joe Montana. I just love that line. Tenchi Juyo here's character never evolves beyond that statement, and truth be known, it doesn't need to. This is a guy who fights bears with tits, and doesn't even blink. And unlike Golgo 13, the anime knows how ridiculous it's being, so the non-characterization sort of fits. Scars? You mean man tattoos? He's truly unafraid. That is the way, Kakugo. Yeah, the whole being creative thing was my bad. 
I didn't know you could punch your way out of this problem. Julio's sister, Izzy, tries to show off, but their father ain't having it. Harara, is this your zero form? Yes. Good, isn't it? Didn't I fight creatively, father? <clears throat> <gasps> your fury had already defeated the beast. The spiral was unnecessary. This is what you get for being born without a penis. <laughs> It seems that demons have existed in this world for a long time, and their family has been fighting them for generations. And with the world completely butt-fucked, demons have been having their way. Their father gives them each a suit of armor to protect the innocent. And then, BAM! We teleport to our first nightmare-inducing image. episode is going to be a bitch to edit. Meet our monster of the day and our new night terrors for the next week, Hamako. I know you can't see too much of her because of her insistence to dress as an S&M queen, but take it from me that she looks like she's trying to smuggle Bob Ross between her legs. Stop! Why are you wasting your time with this girl? Take a closer look at her face. See? Don't you think she's a disgusting pig? Oh! Wow! Ha! Huh. Shit! Why am I able to show you that? This, in a nutshell, is why reviewing Apocalypse Zero is so difficult. The show is balls out crazy, but I can't show you why it's balls out crazy without putting Sensor Kaiser over pretty much the entire frame. I'm gonna wear the poor little dude out. No perversion shall escape my sight. I do this for great justice. <laughs> You're doing the Lord's work, Censor Kaiser. Beyond the grotesque amount of violence, the character design is equally unappealing. I don't usually comment on a show's art style, mainly because I'm aware with what works for some doesn't work for others. But I think I could safely say that this show is one of the ugliest looking anime I've ever seen. Characters have these malformed proportions, especially the eyes. And for some reason, nearly every single design revolves around this baffling star motif. It's like Kingdom Hearts in those fucking zippers! There isn't much of a plot to the series, really. There's only one other character that matters in the slightest besides Juyo and Izzy. And that's Juyo's would-be love interest named... And I'm not making this up. Horia. Hi, I'm Horia. Named after your father, perhaps? The only way I can ever see a girl calling herself Horia is if one, her parents lost a bet, or two, her real name is Gertrude, and this sounds less embarrassing. So far, there have been 70 episodes of Anime Abandoned, but Apocalypse Zero manages to do something that I have yet to encounter here on the show. And it's the bane of every dub that has the sad fate to include it. <laughs> Awkward singing. Do not be afraid to strain your eyes To look up and see the shining sun Keep that little song singing in your heart And the world will be brighter when you're done <sighs> Can't I be doing anything other than listening to this drivel? Like... Suck the pus out of a leper's sores. You always sing good, Horia. You sound just like Madonna. I don't at all. I'm totally different from her. I don't know. You both make me want to hurl myself out of a plate glass window to stop myself from hearing any more of your caterwauling. Since there really isn't a plot to fast forward through, I figure that the best thing to do is just play curator to the more, shall we say, memorable scenes. By a show of hands, how many of you thought that you'd be keeping your sanity by the 10 minute mark? Well, too bad.
This is a symbol of our eternal love, my dear. John Woo's rough draft of Face Off was really weird. But she's not done, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think I can show you what she does with that dude's face. And I don't want to. But this is a review, which means I have to at least try. Hey, that's Kazushi Mata! That's right! Don't you worry now, I'll give you boys the same love that I gave my sweetheart! God damn it, Sensor Kaiser! I know you got a job to do, but you're getting in the way! Nani? Listen, I appreciate what you do. Really, I do, but I can't show them what's on the screen if you're in the way. My purpose and aim is true, and I cannot be caught by any man. You can tell them that this foul woman beast has used the boy's face as a nipple pasty. But telling them isn't the same as showing them. Are you saying that I should allow this filth and perversion to escape my grasp? Well, I wouldn't put it so melodramatically, but maybe you can make an exception this one time. ENOUGH! I will not hear any more of this heretical speak! You say you appreciate my work, and that I am doing the Lord's bidding. But here you are, keeping me from my destiny. You are no man! You are a serpent who speaks her eyes! I will not stray from the path of righteousness! I will not be led by you or anyone else into temptation! I was meant for this important work! I was chosen to do what must be done! To protect the innocent from that what seeks to pervert! It's my function! Kaiser? Kaiser? Kaiser! I am reborn. Sensor Kaiser! You're alive! In a moment of weakness, I have let my anger undo what I am. I am sorry, Sage. I know you meant me no harm. It's alright, Sensor Kaiser. Y you don't need to apologize. But what happened to you? You look less... shitty. I am not sure myself. As I pulled myself back together, something happened to me that I don't quite understand. But I feel like my purpose has become clear. I am the light in the darkness. I am the hope of the universe. I am the answer to all living things that cry out for decency. I am Sensor Kaiser! Ally to modesty! Nightmare to purge! Just you and me. Does this mean I could show the nipple pasty? No. Damn it! Juyo arrives in the nick of time and proceeds to do what hyper-violent anime heroes do best. Try to solve the situation in a non-violent way? Very well. Zero form! Anesthesia! <laughs> you won't feel any pain from this anesthesia. But it will keep a seven-ton creature asleep for at least three days. Just when you think you know where this anime is going, it jerks the wheel and then careens off a bridge. But Hamako wakes up seconds later, so Juyo kicks her skull in. Well, that was a heaping help of pointless, wasn't it? Juyo also punches Hamako so hard that she pukes up an entire pile of bones, and also the somehow still alive dude that got his face sucked off. And what happens next may be the only genuine funny moment in the entire show. Mario, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? No, Joe, are you dumb? Cousin, you've got to hold on to life. You'll be all right. Everyone, everyone's right here by your side. <laughs> God. Horia, that... 
That's not being compassionate. That's being sadistic. The dude's body is half digested down to the bone after he got his face ripped off. Then somehow he spits in the face of nature and survives this process. And you have the fucking balls to say that he should hold on to life? What do you expect him to do? Live the rest of his life as a living corpse? You can't kill this dude fast enough. Choke him with your bare hands. Stomp on his skull until the putty comes out. Break his neck like a Kit Kat. Just don't tell him to keep on living. Who is he? He destroyed the tactical evil which we so carefully created. Who's he? Who are you? The show never goes into any of the other characters besides the three I mentioned, so about like two-thirds of the series is entirely pointless. Apocalypse Zero is nothing but a string of ultra-violent, shit-your-pants crazy scenes strung together by the thinnest plotline imaginable. Watching this show basically boils down to this. Boring. Boring. Don't care. Don't care. Oh my god, I live in my own eyes! Fing Bluey Miguana Fa Cthulhu Relay Awagana Gulf Atagan! You know, it's been a while since we last checked in on Izzy. What's she up to? Oh my god, she evil. I am not human. My ultimate goal is beyond the superficial of good and evil. I have only one dream. To create a utopia on this dying planet where everything forms a harmonious whole. Harmony between yellow sand and green vegetation. Harmony between water and light and wind. Harmony so that the foggy mist between heaven and earth is gone and everything is united as one as it should be. For this to happen, there is only one thing we must do. Destroy humankind. Jesus fuck, I've seen professional wrestlers with more believable heel turns than this. Actually, I've seen backyard wrestlers with more believable heel turns. I know this seems so pedantic considering the anime, but really? You're gonna make your villain Juyo's sister, who turned evil because she put on her armor, and then suddenly realized that humanity is bad and should be punished for ruining the planet? They didn't even ruin the planet! It was established that the planet ruined itself! I want to be angrier at the show because of how stupid and inept it is, but it's like it already knows how stupid and inept it is. And somehow, that makes it all the more worse. It's like every single piece of criticism I have is deflected by the notion that they intentionally made it that way. Unbelievable villain motivation? Yeah, we did that on purpose. Ugly art direction? Yeah, that too. Awful dialogue and script? Dude, we worked really hard to make it that shitty. You want to know what the sad part is? That last statement is probably true. It's such a drag to be the best at everything. Apparently Izzy just spends her days dicking around with her creepy patchwork slave girls and making mincemeat out of dudes she has round up and brought before her, until she finds out that her brother Julio is alive and killing her monsters. So she pulls a Rita Repulsa and sends more after him. That is our plot. And by the way, all these characters that the show bothered to name drop don't have any more scenes than you see here. And this entire army of thugs she has at her disposal? Never seen again. Imagine how fast Power Rangers would have gone by if Rita just ditched the putties and went straight for the giant monsters. And that's basically what happens here. Juyo, fresh off of killing Hamako, next fights a gigantic S&M hipster smurf. You heard me. No! You take my individuality and intend to make me another dog in the machine! Wait! Did I also not mention that Smurfster here has a dick microphone that he uses to sing badly into? Turn on the mic! Alright, baby! Let's get rocking! The house is on fire! We don't need no stick and scroll! We don't need no stick and teacher! We don't need no stick and scroll! I'm... 
just as speechless as you are. After reducing Smurfster to dust, Julio has to face his toughest challenge yet. A succubus nurse whose vagina can strip the flesh off bones. Finally. Mm, just you and me. Come here. I guarantee I'll be much, much better than that silly doll of yours. Let me volunteer to love you. <gasps> Oh, shit, son! Right in the face! I mean, yeah, she's a demon that feasts on men's flesh and everything, but pimp smacking her right in the face? Didn't anyone ever tell you that it's impolite to sit on the place that you prepare your food? You should be ashamed. It's cold as ice! Realizing he's a stone-cold motherfucker, the succubus decides to ditch the pretense and just launch an attack. And oh, what an attack it is. Hakuga, what kind of sick relationship do you have with your doll? I can't let you live like that. Let me volunteer to help you. Double Big Tit Bomb! Double Big Tit Bomb. Yeah, that's worse. Because her entire body is an erogenous zone, all of Julio's attacks have no effect on her, and she heals from any damage thrown her way. How should I deal with her shellfish-like body? Cut it finely. Fine enough so it cannot be put back together. Don't you just love the fact that our hero has a voice in his head telling him to cut up women into tiny little pieces like a goddamn serial killer? Yes, Julio. Cut her up into tiny pieces. And when you're done, find another girl that looks like your mother! So, what does he do? He pulls a mar from Sin City and fucking grinds her ass into the asphalt till she's nothing but a stain! Acceleration run! about you but I'm having a ball. So he fights a fat hag, an SM hipster smurf, and a succubus nurse. How does the show decide to round out this quad tick of mindfuckery? Well, next Julio fights an old man with razor sharp spit and a transmorphing pork dirk. It's been a long time since I've met such a feisty young man. I'm more than 90 years old so it's a little tough to fight against you all by myself. I'll need a little help from my weenie for this. Okay, that's it. Fast forwarding to the end. If the anime's not going to give a shit, then neither am I. Julio winds up slaying the geezer, and Izzy, finally having it up to here with him, decides to do the job herself. But she doesn't attack him directly. Oh no, because that would make too much sense. Instead, she possesses the corpse of the geezer and attacks Julio, even though it's made clear that this is dangerous for her, as all damage he would do to the corpse would reciprocate onto her. And she takes this as a good thing? I am now going to take over Eikichi's consciousness. I advise against it. If you and Eikichi unite, you will feel exactly the same pain as he will. And if Eikichi should die, then your life will be in extreme jeopardy. Interesting. Is he? You're better than your brother, and he knows that. Why are you arbitrarily tying one hand behind your back? You got no balls to swing! Even when the corpse she possesses starts to have rigor mortis set in, she just laughs it off and thinks this makes for a fair fight. And still, Julio has to have a pep talk from the spirit of his father on how to beat her. Kakugo, do you remember? Do you remember the story that I once told you about a tortoise who won a race running against a hare? Uh, not sure how this has anything to do with fighting my sister, but uh, fuck it, I'll play along. 
That wasn't just a fairy tale, Kakugo. <sighs> and that's the entire pep talk! The spirit of his dad enters his headspace and tells him, Yeah, you know that story about the tortoise and the hare? Yeah, that shit be real, yo. And just fucks off. Worst pep talk ever! Seriously, he'd be more helpful if he just spent 20 minutes talking to Julio about his favorite pair of pants. Not like a good pep talk would have made any difference because what finally does Izzy in is her being a dumb bitch and not caring that the corpse is slowing her down. Julio finishes Izzy off and this whole fucking show can come to an end. Do I need to explain why this show is a punch to the mind's dick? Beyond the non-existent plot, barely there characters, and the hideous art style, the only remarkable thing about this show is how balls-to-the-wall crazy it is, and how it seems that everyone who was involved in this creation seemed to want to make the absolute worst anime in history. I suppose the distinction is worth the attention it would gather, regardless if it's positive or not. Congratulations, Apocalypse Zero. You tried to be shit, and you succeeded with flying colors. I hope you're proud of yourselves. God damn. Jesus. Fuck. Alright, we need something refreshing to cleanse the palate after something like that. So guess what? December, we're kicking off with uh, a top 20 list. Top 20 giant robots. Till next time. Censor your friends! Censor your relatives! Censor the planet! I hate you.